Hi there. NFO, NFO, NFO. There's been an insane number of NFOs that have been launched this year. Yeah, over a hundred already. And mutual funds have raised over 76,000 crores already this year. They've made a ton of money. But what exactly are these NFOs and why should you as investors consider them? So let's dive right in. IPOs are a way of companies to go public for the first time. New fund offer or NFO is a way that AMCs or asset management companies raise money for the purchase of its securities on a first time subscription basis. Basically, they provide you with an opportunity to subscribe for a particular scheme and they're available only for a limited time period. So mutual fund companies usually come out with these NFOs during a bull phase. Now, why is that? because market sentiment is quite positive and investors are looking in to put more money into the market. That's what's happening right now, which is why you see a lot of NFOs and IPOs coming out into the market. Acha, before I forget, why don't you like and share this video with somebody who will find this useful and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Investors may purchase units of this mutual fund scheme during this predetermined period and subscribe to the NFO at an offer price, which is usually rupees 10. Now there are two types of funds, close-ended funds and open-ended funds. For close-ended funds, you cannot enter the scheme once the NFO period expires. For open-ended schemes, you can enter or exit the scheme as and when you wish. NFO subscribers in general have been able to generate noticeably better gains post-listing. An NFO is cheaper than existing funds as it is new to the market. They are comparable to IPOs in which the public can purchase shares before they are actually listed on the stock exchange. So as we always say, you have to do your research before investing. But for NFOs, where do you begin? Because they are all brand new and shiny. They don't really have a past performance or track record that you can you know, refer to. So what should you consider? Start with fund house history. Ensure that the mutual fund house has a strong history of operating in the mutual fund industry for at least 5 to 10 years. This will help you assess performance during up and down market cycles. Next up, fund objectives. Reading the offer document will help in this case, but basically what you need to figure out is what the fund manager is actually going to do with all that money. An investment strategy is usually highlighted in the document and you need to figure out whether it's going to work or not according to you. Third, the minimum subscription amount. Now this can range anywhere between 500 rupees to 5000 rupees and this is a primary criteria to consider while shortlisting possible investment options. Now if the minimum subscription amount is higher than what you can actually spare, then you need to re-evaluate your options. Fourth, your investment horizon. How long are you willing to invest that money for? NFOs usually come with a lock-in period, anywhere between 3 to 5 years. And once you've invested in them, you may not be able to redeem your money before maturity. Lastly, you must consider cost of investment. Now you must check for things like entry and exit load. If the lock-in period is longer than your investment horizon, then that may be a cost to you as well. So be aware of that. A word of caution, there are some things to keep in mind before going for these NFOs. They have no proven track record and they come with a high initial expense. Usually the money spent on the marketing of these funds is recovered from the investor. Now if you are someone who is aware of market conditions and can analyze investments properly, you can make an informed decision about these. So that's about it on NFOs. So you are convinced that we will say more.